Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. And I got a request to uh, show how to do some comic book shading. So that's what I'm doing here. I uh, roughed out this, you know, generic superhero pose. Um, actually did a couple. That one was kind of basic over there. Uh, so I roughed this guy out. Uh, practiced up on some line work. I've been doing a lot of digital painting, so I wanted to make sure, you know, had a little feel for the line work I want to put down. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and explain that. So I'm going to come up here and, and detail some of this, uh, this rough sketch. Uh, and I'm uh, using Sketchbook Pro and uh, Wacom tablet, uh, Cintiq actually. So, you know, just so you know what I'm using, but any Intuos uh, or any tablet, I'll be able to do any of this stuff. I don't, I don't think you could really do it with a mouse. I had a few people ask that, and I, I don't think that's possible. I never tried, but... I imagine it would be uh, like pulling fingernails or something. It'd be pretty tough. So, um, so at any rate, uh, this is how I go about doing this. Um, generally, I'll get the line work a little bit smoother than this before I start trying to, you know, cross hatch or put any of my uh, my deeper shadows or, you know, um, you know, definitely before I get to my line work. So, what I do is just kind of keep filling out the form get my shapes where I think they're going to go. Uh, I usually block in some shadows like this first. You know, um, I, I try to try to picture, let me zoom in a little bit more so I can explain this better. I try to picture, you know, uh, say my light source is coming down like this. So here's our light. Um, you know, it, maybe it's further in front of the character, not behind his shoulder there, behind his back. Um, so if it was to hit, I'll start with the bicep and use that as my guide. If it was to hit the bicep, maybe the light, specular highlight would do something like that on the bicep, okay? So then from there, I take the darkest areas, um, you know, block those in. Um, this back part of the arm would probably all be in shadow, um, but I usually would leave a little bit open for some line work, and also just so that you know, it doesn't all just blend together unless you're doing a shot where the character is uh, in the dark, in which case you would want to pretty much fill that all in. But for this uh, sake, I would do like maybe some lines like this, you know, just to show a little bit of, uh, you know, like there's a little bit of light getting back there. Um, let's see, and actually this thumb would be over here more. I just kind of fix things as I go. It's one of the things I like a lot about digital. If you watch any of my other videos, I talk about that a lot because there's just so many ways to speed through stuff and, and edit on the fly. Uh, that's what really got me into wanting to do digital. And I was a big, you know, advocate for not going digital because I couldn't imagine how it's not worth having uh, originals. But, you know, there you still have to do some originals. I still draw commissions at shows and things like that so I still get my originals but uh, majority of my work is all digital so uh, the part I want to explain about cross hatching and shading is that you pretty much just want to you know have a couple rules uh, one that you always pay attention to your light source obviously uh, two that you have uh, different levels of uh, value even with your cross hatching you know obviously if you cross hatched everything the same way your uh, drawing would look really flat, um, really boring to look at. So you got to have a variety of uh, tonal value, basically. You know, just like if you're digitally painting, it's all in your value is all in grays. Well, if you're cross hatching, then you got to kind of have a little bit of that going on too. Um, if you're drawing for color comics, then obviously that comes into play, and you know the colorist can back you up and do a lot of cool stuff. But if you're like me and you're doing black and white comics, then you really want to be, you know, uh, concerned with um, the way that it's going to look, obviously, in black and white. So um, that means having some good good tonal value or, you know, if you're using, like, uh, Mango Studio, you can actually uh, mess with the, um, it's like Zipatone, but it's not called Zipatone anymore. Um, it's just the tones that you can apply in Mango Studio. So here, you know, in this software, um, it doesn't have much of that that I'm aware of anyways. 
Uh, so, you know, I pretty much do it all the traditional way where I just cross hatch. Now, up here on the chest, uh, chest muscle, I would do something like this where I darken maybe the edges of it like this. Do a little bit for uh, grayscale or, you know, line work. Maybe do something like this. You notice I feather all my lines. Um, I'm big into that where I basically start thicker and then thin it down as I go to the area that I picture uh, maybe being a little bit less light. Uh, the other thing is I always stagger everything. I go dark light, dark light, um, you know, for the most part. So uh, it, I, I picture that the shadow, you know, wherever I'm applying the darker line, that's where the, sh or the thicker portion of the feathered line, excuse me, uh, that's obviously where there's, you know, I, I'm trying to imply more shadow. Uh, then the other thing is I always do dark to light and I leave little uh, breaks where the, uh, the round over can occur in the, in the shape. So, and the other thing is, is uh, I try to create um, a few different effects with the texturing that I do with my line work. So it doesn't look so flat, doesn't look so boring, you know. Um, trying to get to a point where I can show that off more. Um, you know, I've got one where I do a line across, some little kind of teeth coming off them like that. Uh, I've got these where they're just thick to thin feathered lines. I've got this little glare, do, you know, I, I think of it like a glare, but it's really just another way to round out the form. Um, I do that one where I take like, uh, you know, maybe some thicker black uh, point there and then break off some little lines like that. So it's, it's all these different little texturing things that I do, like one right here. I can do like a little rounded line to show the curvature of that muscle. And then again, the little teeth off the line like that. So I guess that's similar to this one down here. But all those I look at like different, not styles, they're all together in, in one style that I'm trying to put together. Um, but they're all just a little bit different texture. You know, I have a couple of those. I try not to get too crazy. Um, notice some of my older drawings I had like just like six or seven little, uh, I don't know what you want to call those, but uh, styles that I was putting in there to, together to form my piece. And that might be a little bit much. You, you know, you definitely want to have more than one consecutive way of doing your shadows. Um, you know, I try to think of it like, all right, I should have a way to do chrome, I should have a way to do muscles, uh, I should have a way to texture clothing, uh, cloth, you know. Um, all those things need to have a little bit different uh, way that they're shadowed, even in the line art, to uh, make for a better looking, uh, better looking rendition. So, and then, you know, then you got your ways that you shadow. So, like, say right here, I want a big black shadow under the... Uh, the chest there on the top stomach muscles just kind of block that in I always do this little thing where I have like the the light kind of rolling around you know part of the area that's in shadow oh, excuse me and then here I probably just do some lines across here maybe something like that Cross hatching like this. Uh, the other good thing to do is always zoom back and kind of check your work. Um, see if, you know, if the, I guess the zooming back part, you got to check and make sure that the lines that you're creating uh, make the right kind of shading. If they're too tight and too small, you'll zoom back like this and they'll ultimately disappear. Uh, if it looks like it's rounding out the form and creating highlights where you're trying to show highlights, then, then it's all good. So um, the other thing, like say you're doing a material, say this uh, this guy's wearing a suit that goes down around his, his abs, abs of steel, and then say he's got like, you know, 
it's a relatively shiny material, for instance. So I'll do the, you know, a little bit of it in shadow, maybe on the sides here. I'll do, you know, a light source kind of at the top, another little glare before it breaks off into the shadow, and then maybe some, you know, some line, line work like that. And then the glare, I'll do maybe some of those little teeth or let's try something like that. Obviously the beauty of digital is you can try you know, enough of this stuff out, see if it works, uh, fix it in the next stage. Um, I, I do um, uh, usually about two, three stages of line art. And then my last chance to fix it is when I do my inks. I ink my own work, so um, you know I usually uh, clean it up one last time there. Yeah, so that would be like kind of maybe a shinier material. Now I'm trying to make it look like it's a metal. I'll even do something like this on the very edge. Maybe put like a little little glare or glint kind of thing. And then if I'm really trying to make it look shiny or something, I'll even put a glint on the outside. And one of these little doohickeys. So that's that's if I'm really trying to make it look shiny. Um, and what else? Uh, I guess I can do part of this leg. Cause I hate to just do a little bit of it and maybe don't you know get enough of it. Uh, the other thing that's really important when doing line work like this, and I always talk about this too, is your... Um, your line weight around the object. So say this is the uh, leg or whatever. And sorry, I got I still got my sketch in there. I've been doing that a lot where I actually draw over top of my my rough sketch on one layer. It can get a little messy, but I actually like it now because it uh it allows me to um, keep refining the artwork a little bit more. You got to train yourself to look past the you know construction lines and stuff like that, but I I, I look at it lo look at it now like it's it's data, not you know scribbles, which basically it's just scribbles. But train yourself to look at it like it's just more information to work with. Okay, so now actually I think this part would go. I don't know. I'm horrible with legs, so forgive forgive this. Um, I got to study these some more constantly go back and restudy uh, aspects of the body because they're, they're just so darn tricky but okay so get the rest of this in here real fast there's a like a vein kind of muscle that goes up through here and it oops control Z and it segments back I think I end up doing it something like that all right at any rate okay so we know our light source is again up here okay um, and I can go off what I did here with this leg and try to stay consistent with the line work. Um, so I, I want to block in some shadows first of like, you know, this big muscle on the top of the leg. So we'll say something like that. Um, yeah, I don't like the way I ended that. Just fill that in. Okay, so th that part, um, this guy is like, I mean, you see down here, I basically just rounded out the shadow there. So what it does there is it makes it look like, you know, um, the light, I was trying to force a perspective that the leg is shifting down like that after the upper part of the leg. Um, if not, you know, I would just say shadow like that, um, which works too. But I think what I was, or, you know, believe what my intent was is to try to make that look more like uh, the leg is pointing down and therefore the light is blocking off there or whatever so stay uh, consistent with that this part same way I'll just go like this though so about the same and this bottom part where you see the shading down here what that basically is is a secondary light source 
uh, is usually why you do that. So uh, what's called reflected light or uh, bounced light, I think are the two terms. So what you do is just maybe do another little shape like that. You know, if you're trying to do that, you don't always have to do that bounce light. Um, I like it because when you take it from the inking to the color stage, uh, if you're, you know, going to color it, uh, it gives you another way to round out the form and the color and I don't know, it just looks kind of cool when you do uh, bounce light on uh, comic book stuff, in my opinion. So you just leave a little area there for some cross hatching. Uh, helps round out, you know, and, and solidify the shape there. Uh, back here, you know, I start to picture that there's obviously less light getting to underneath of the leg. Um, this, uh, um, this little string muscle, I don't know what it's called, but it kind of runs under that part of the leg. Really, that'd probably all be in shadow, but I just, you know, just to show that it's there, I just kind of, you know, do some little lines like that. And by the time it gets down here, a lot of this is going to be in pretty heavy shadow. Uh, again, except for any bounce light that you might be showing, but as I did over here, or didn't, I didn't show any bounce light there, so I'm not going to here. Uh, just to say somewhat consistent. So a lot of this would be in shadow. Now from what I've studied too, um, I've heard that it's better to draw your shadows in. And you can see I'm kind of sketching mine right now and I probably shouldn't be. Uh, so I'll show you. You're supposed to have a little more confidence with your shadowing and draw them in uh, like this, like this. Um, I would perceive that this muscle here would cast a shadow like onto this part of the knee. Uh, it casts a pretty big shadow right there, like so. Uh, maybe even further than that. And then the rest, I guess I could put a little bit of line work there and that could signify bounce light if it had to. Or who knows, by the time I get to the next stage, maybe I'll just ink that in. I'm not sure. So fill this all in. And you can tell I don't have a clear-cut plan as I'm doing this. I'm, you know, I'm just kind of working it out as I go, and then I'll, you know, maybe pan back, see if that looks right. It doesn't. To me, it's not looking the same as this other leg. Um, it's almost like this side is more rounded and bubbled, bubble, you know, like or whatever. Uh, so hopefully I can fix that with the shading. Um, and I think part of it. Let me see if I can do away with that right there. If that helps. No, it's basically the shape. I I, I made the uh, shadow too teardropped. It's a little bit too even with the shape of the the leg there. So let me try to adjust that. Let me bring it down like that. And it's a touch better. It's still not great, but let's try it in the shadows or the line work and see if I can fix that. Again, I feather the lines, stick the thin. What I'll do too is I'll always keep like the, um, the, if I'm doing a dual light source like this, I'll actually shade the top differently from the bottom. Uh, again, to show uh, that one is a bounce light and one is maybe the top light source or whatever. So to me, it's like, you know, I kind of look at it like you're giving uh, notes to the next person that's going to take the artwork. Even if that person's you, uh, you still kind of treat it as such. So, you know, because who knows, maybe I draw this and I come back to it, you know, a week later and ink it or something. You know, I want to remember what I was thinking when I, when I did it. And, you know, generally for the most part, uh, obviously it's my work, so I'm going to be able to have a clue as to what I was thinking. But... Just in case, you know, it's it's good to have that, um, you know, built into your the way that you do the stuff. Uh, another thing that I recently heard. Um, is the longer you make the lines, the softer you're trying to show the transition of the shadowing, um, which you know makes total sense. So if you have something that's 
a short stout shadow or a specular uh, shading then they're going to be short lines and if it's something that's a gradual shading then you're going to use longer uh, drawn out lines for your, your cross hatching. So I figured I'd share that since I just heard that and totally made sense. And I'll probably bring this to a close. I don't want this video to be too lengthy. Um, and I just wanted to basically, you know, show you some of this work and, and explain kind of the thought process of what I do when I when I do it. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful, you know, to you and uh, addresses the questions that, uh, that a few people had. And then also be sure to uh, like and subscribe so I can keep bringing you these videos. I bring uh, at least one a week right now. But I try my best to do two, you know, sometimes three in a week, just to just to really progress the channel. I want to see this thing work. So um, I, I'm very thankful for everybody that's been part of it, and you know, that checks out my vids and and lets you know gives me some feedback and lets me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, you know, all that good stuff. Um, you know, it allows me to keep creating art, and uh, you know, even if it's just a few bucks I derive from it, you know, nothing substantial at this point, but at the same time, you know, it allows me to have an audience, engage with that audience, and, you know, make a few dollars in the process, you know, some added gas money or something, so nothing wrong with that. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you thought of this, and uh, feel free to ask me any questions. I do try to respond, and uh, I'll keep bringing them your way. So, and check us out on Facebook under Ram Studio Comics. I thank you for watching. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. Bye-bye.